In the previous video, we have created helper methods to place our start and exit positions, but we have not checked if it works. So let's here debug dot log our start position and debug dot log our exit position. And after we are sure that this method correctly places our uh, positions of start and exit point on our map as we direct it through the start and edge and exit edge we are going to implement the visualization for our start and edge uh, points so let's go back to unity let's open the map generator and you should see the start edge and exit edge are set to none so instead of this let's set the start edge to be let's say left and exit edge to be right and now we can set maybe grid to 5x5 five five to easier check if this is correct. Let's start this. And we should see two positions. And we can see that 4 and 4 is the last position. And this is the exit position. So this appears to be correctly placed on the right side of our map. And 0, 0, 004 is on the left side of our map. So that's good. Let's stop the game and let's place it to be uh, exit to be maybe down. Let's try it out. And we can see that now the start position is 0, 03 and exit position is 0, 0, 0. So we might be pretty certain that this works. So that's good. Now to visualizing the positions of our start and exit points. So we need to create a new class called map visualizer because grid visualizer was only to create our grid but our map will be created by our map visualizer so let's call it map visualizer and let's open it up in our code editor. Okay so what we will want to do here we will want to leave it as a mono behavior we will want to first create a private transform, call it parent, and first of all let's create awake, and let's assign parent to be this dot transform. So this will be the parent, so our newly created game objects will be, will be parented to this map visualizer object. Next, what we need to do is create public void visualize map. And we will pass to it our map grid. Let's call it the grid. And we will need to pass somehow data from our candidate map. So we will create a map data called data. Let's finish this method and let's slide down. And outside of the class definition, we are going to create public struct. And let's call it map data. Okay, and here we are going to create public bool array, obstacle array. Great. Next, we will need public list night pieces, night pieces list. Great. We will store here also the start and exit position, so public vector 3. And I need to import the list, so list, alt enter using system.collections.generic. Okay, and vector3 start position. And public vector3 exit position. Great. And basically, for now, that's it. So we can go to it and left click. And we should have moved to map data CS. So it was moved into a separate file to our Unity assets folder. Now we can implement this method. So we will pass this data to this visualize map method. And next we need to call pool visualize using prefabs. 
that will be used later. So basically, what we need to do is to create a simple if statement. So if visualize using prefabs, we will have a separate method for this. Else, we will use simple primitives to visualize our map. So let's call visualize using primitives. Okay, we will go, uh, we are going to pass grid and data and let's alt enter on it and generate this method. Okay, let's slide it down and let's finish this statement. Great. Let's slide it down to our newly created method. And first of all, we want to place our uh, start and exit position. So, let's call place start and exit points. And we will pass our, basically we can pass our data. Okay, and alt enter. Let's, I have misspelled it, so let's call it points. Great. And here we are going to call a method called create indicator. We are going to pass data start position start color and primitive type here we do not have the start color so let's slide up and let's create two public colors start color and exit color so now if you have not misspelled the color name it should be good but we do not have this method, so let's alt enter and generate this method, copy this statement, and we are going to call it the same for exit position and give it an exit color. Great. Now let's implement creating our primitives. So what we want to do is call var element equals team object create primitive and we are going to pass sphere now we have our primitive we need to set this element transform position to start position and this might we might rename it to just position great and now we also need to set element transform dot parent equals this parent so uh, this uh, transform of, of this class next we basically will want to set renderer uh, get the renderer of this object so var renderer equals element get component of type renderer and from the renderer we are going to set renderer dot material dot set color we are going to set the parameter underscore the capital letter color to be our color so we have a start color let's rename it to color so this way we should be able to visualize our start and exit positions but we yet have to implement our uh, method for our candidate map to return us the map data so let's go to candidate maps class okay let's slide it down and at the bottom of this class let's create a public map data return map data so we should have everything to return this uh, so let's call return new map data let's open the parentheses let's open the parentheses and let's say the obstacle array equal this dot obstacle array what else did we have we have a night pieces list equals night pieces list and start position equals start position start point and exit position equals exit point 
And did we have anything else in here? I don't think so, but let's go to the definition. No, this, those were only four variables in this uh, struct. So let's save it and let's finish this statement. So we will return a new map data containing all those informations. And let's slide it up because here we need to call the create map method to set start and end point and we will be able to get some randomly placed night pieces. So let's maybe go back to our map visualizer class and let's slide up because now we have placed our start and exit position but we can also place our nights. So for int i equals zero i less than map obstacles uh, sorry data obstacles length we're going to loop through it if data obstacle array i is true so if it is an obstacle we are going to call var position on grid equals grid calculate coordinates from index and we will pass our index i which will give us position where we want to place this obstacle and now we are going to see if position on the grid is equal to data start point uh, or exit point start position or exit position we don't want to place anything there so let's check again for the exit position position on grid equals data exit position we want to continue in any case we want to make sure that we do not place anything where there is start or exit point and if not then we are we are going to set grid dot set cell position on the grid dot x position on the grid dot z as cell object type of the obstacle so we have set this as the obstacle and if our we are going to create a new method called place night uh, obstacle we are going to pass the data and the position on the grid and basically if we are going to place our night we are going to continue otherwise we are going to place a different primitives to indicate the difference between knights and their obstacles so let's create this place knight i need i have misspelled it okay alt enter generate method and let's find this method and here we are going to simply go through for each bar knight in data night pieces list so if our night dot position is equal to the position on the grid so if any of the position in our night pieces list is equal to this grid position we are going to create indicator and now we are going to pass uh, the position on the grid color red so our knights will be red primitives of type cube so we are going to place red cubes where are the knights and we are return we are going to return true if we have placed an a knight and otherwise we are going we are going to return false so our night pieces this doesn't contain this obstacle so we are going to place a uh, white uh, cube when we have this uh, implemented so for now that's basically it and last thing we need is to go back to our map generator class and here we are going to slide down delete those debug.logs and we need to have our public map visualizer called map visualizer we are going to call our candidate map map equals new candidate map 
And what we need to call to pass here is our grid and our number of pieces. And do we have number of pieces here? I don't think so. So we need to create a public int number of pieces. And again, we can give it a range. So let's say between 1 and 10. And I need to change the brackets here. Great. And now we can pass this value to the candidate map. And let's call map map.generate, uh, so uh, create map. And what we need to pass here is start position, exit position, and auto repair is false for now. We don't care about this parameter. And we can call, call our map visualizer dot visualize map. And we need to pass our grid. And we need to call our map. Uh, and we need to have our return map data class, uh, method called. And again, we are going to pass false for now. As we do not have the prefabs yet implemented. Great. Now we can go back to Unity. And here we will need to create our new object called map visualizer. Okay, great. Now let's drag onto it our map visualizer class. And we have two colors. So let's set start color to be green and exit color to be, let's say, yellow. Great. And now we need to go to map generator and drag our map visualizer into our map generator. Let's see if everything else is set. Our number of pieces can be two or maybe five. Okay, let's save it. And I sh think we can press play and it should generate our map. And unfortunately, we have a bug here in candidate map class. So let's open it up. So before we can create anything, we need to call obstacle array inside our create map method to be a new Boolean array. And we need to give it grid dot width size times grid dot length. So this will be the size of our Boolean array. And we also can set our night pieces list here in the create map because we are going to call create map every time we want to generate a new map. Okay, and this should be it. So let's go back to Unity and let's press play. Okay, and we see some results, but for now they are placed incorrectly. So let's go back to our map visualizer. And what we will do is slide it down until we find our create indicator. And in the, when we set the position, we are going to add vector 3, a uh, new vector 3 of 0.5f, 0.5f and 0.5f. So basically 0.5 we are going to add to each of the coordinates. Let's go back to Unity. Let's press play. And we can see that we have our start point, our end point. Let's see if they are correctly implemented. Our start edge should be left, so it is. And our exit edge should be down, so it is. And our knights are placed on our map. So we can quickly set the width to be 11 and length to be 11. Let's press play. And basically this will be our map that we will soon populate with more obstacles. In the next video we will place obstacles around our knight pieces on spots where our knights could potentially move according to the chess rules.